Hello my precious little dragons, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. So today I'm going to go over the best beauty stuff I tried in 2020. So I don't have a huge list and it's not really in any particular order because I have the worst trouble ranking things. I'm not good at it. I did rank my worst beauty. I had, I had trouble ranking this. <laughs> So I am going to go ahead and just the one thing I do want to mention is I don't have all of these things on me. I'm at my mom's for winter break and I just wasn't able to bring all this stuff with me. So all right, the first thing I want to mention I actually do have on me is the Child Palette by ColourPop. So I'm not just mentioning this because the packaging is adorable, but it is. I mean, look at this packaging. It's so cute. So oh, I just love this so much and it is just a gorgeous little olive green palette it has some perfect shimmers i love that it's as cutest in the galaxy i love all these little details like the little frog at the bottom and then the shade right next to it is the little frog you know i just love it there's these gorgeous shades in it which i mean it's gonna be hard to swatch because i have stuff left over my arm but like the shade called the force is really gorgeous this shade called Right Hand Mando is really gorgeous which you probably can't see because i'm terrible at swatching stuff yeah terrible at swatching stuff and that's gonna be out of focus but whatever there's super shock shadow in it that's also really pretty which yeah that swatch is not gonna show up I don't know why I bother swatching stuff I'm really bad at it <laughs> just at, like I'll, I'll just let you like look at the palette and look at how gorgeous it is I think it's a really good balance of really encompassing what it's supposed to like it really does a good job of showcasing the child and showcasing the cuteness of the palette because of course that's what draws everyone to the child that's what draws everyone to baby yoda or what's his name grando grando they've just announced his name mm. what is baby yoda's real name because <laughs> they like they like just announced it in season two grogu grogu yeah the fifth episode of mandalorian second season ha ha anyway i just think it does a really good job of being a unique color story especially for ColourPop and they're kind of known for putting out a lot of the same colors a lot of the same like looking palettes so I think this one did a good job of being unique and on point for what it was trying to do and also it's just really wearable I love wearing it I can create really unique looks from it like I said I specifically love these these shimmer shadows and the super shock is really good for like a topper shade but then the mattes are also really good. They perform really well. I just think it's so good. It's a nice little nine pan. It's not expensive. I think it's still available. So I would highly recommend it. If you're in the mood for a green, olive greenish palette, go for it. The next one I want to mention is also ColourPop. So this is the ColourPop No Filter Concealer. And I use the shade Fair 04. So I can do a really quick little swatch. So it has just your normal doe foot applicator. It's pretty perfect for my skin tone. So I use this for pretty much everything I use it for under eye I use it for spot concealment but it just it blends really well yeah I mean you can see how it covered up all of that eyeshadow that was left over on my arm it's way too much you actually don't need that much I use like Robert Welsh's like dotting technique where you just <laughs> dot your eye but I mean you can see how well it covers it's very comfortable it doesn't crease on me it wears really nicely it just this is like my go-to this is my go-to concealer all in all it's it's the perfect shade for me I love it <laughs> this is the fairest of the neutral shades the other ones before this are just different undertones but this is fairest with neutral undertones overall very good concealer definitely recommend I, ha I do have combination skin it's been leaning more dry since I moved to Alaska so I would say this worked a little bit better for my skin when I was in a more humid environment. Now that I'm a little drier, I am a little bit more careful with my application because it just it just doesn't wear quite as nicely now that my skin is really going through it. But it's still probably one of the best of all the concealers I own and I'm really really happy I tried it. Next one I want to mention is the Oma Beauty Oma Oma Beauty is that how you pronounce it? The Oma Beauty Say What Foundation. I use the shade White Pearl T1N. So this is again the very fairest shade with neutral undertones. So this one actually took a little bit of working for me at the very start. When I tried it the very first time it actually separated so it came out kind of like <laughs> like oil and foundation oil and water kind of did that sort of thing but I, I shook it up I mixed it really well and first time I actually tried to use it it wore really well it sits great on my skin it's a really good match for me here I'll 
It's a really good match for me. You can see the undertone matches really well. It does a good job of just concealing and brightening so it's not like so it can it has like buildable coverage so I tend to use it more on the medium side. This is obviously what it would be like at full but it also yeah, you can see it just like sort of blends in perfectly to my skin which <laughs> that was where my bronzer was and I probably have a weird patch there but it just works really really well for my skin and I got it after I moved to Alaska so I haven't seen how it worked when I was a little bit more oily but it's been working really well with my more dry combination skin which again this, this skin changing thing has been really throwing me for a loop <laughs> let me just say because I have never been like I've always been either just straight up oily or combination. I've never really had to deal with extreme dryness. It is throwing me for a loop. It's messing with my foundation routine. I'm having to really lean into my moisturizing products this year. But I really wanted to focus on the makeup I tried specifically for the first time in 2020 as opposed to just my favorites in general. Um, so you can see I blended it into my hand and it's pretty much a perfect match. So yeah. <laughs> The next one I want to talk about is the L'Oreal Lash Paradise Mascara. I am wearing it on my eyes today, even though it's really hard to tell because I have a super dramatic eye look and I couldn't find my eyelash curler. <laughs> but this is just one of my favorite mascaras I've ever tried. Legitimately, it's what I've been using for like months on end because it's just that good. So I deal with pretty severe smudging on my under eyes, but this one does not smudge. Um, I mean, well, smudging on my top and my bottom, but more severely on my bottom. But this one, I put it on, it doesn't budge, it makes my lashes look great. <laughs> it's, it's an affordable price because it's a drugstore. I barely try any other mascaras unless they come in a beauty box, but this one is definitely my top mascara. I will continue to repurchase it. It's great. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Next, I want to mention the Vintage Cosmetic Company Makeup Removing Cloths. So um, this is basically just a different version of the makeup eraser if you've ever used those but essentially you just wet it with water and you're able to wipe your makeup off so there's one side that is specifically used for exfoliating and then there's one that's a little bit more gentle you can feel the difference but it's really good at helping you get all your makeup off sometimes I use it in conjunction with a balm sometimes I don't basically just depends on how me heavy my makeup is that day so like for instance with this makeup I would absolutely go in with the balm first and then use this but if it's a lighter makeup day, I'll just use water on this. But it's just, it's really good. It's sustainable. It's way better than makeup wipes. So I have really gotten away from using makeup wipes in 2020. I really want to work to live a more sustainable lifestyle and do things that are better for the environment. A reusable water bottle, stuff like that. But also it's cheaper in the long run because I just invested in these ones. I got them on sale from Sephora. And honestly, they work super well. I have a pack of, I want to say four. They're just really good. So, and they're nice and soft. These are, these are very good. Definitely recommend that or just another makeup removing cloth like the makeup eraser, but I haven't personally tried those. So these are the only ones I can actually like recommend. All right. Next, I want to mention along the same lines as the makeup removing cloths, I want to mention these reusable rounds. They are made of, they are made of bamboo. So these are a replacement for like cotton rounds or cotton balls. The only thing I don't use them for that I still use cotton balls for is removing nail polish because I'm just worried the nail polish won't come out of these. But if I'm applying toner or trying to remove something like from my under eye, this is my go-to. And they came in this little baggie. I can't remember the exact brand name, but there's lots of them in lots of different places. I got mine from Amazon, which I was just talking about trying to be more sustainable, but Amazon is one of the only places that ships for free to Alaska. So that is my one guilty, I'm a broke college student pleasure. <laughs> but I'm trying to be sustainable at least. They work super well, they wash well. I just, when I'm done with them, I toss them all into the mesh bag tie it off so they don't come out in the wash and throw it in the washing machine. They clean really nicely. Again, I don't use them for nail polish because I'm worried about what really heavy use would do to them, but overall they work extremely well. This is one of my most used purchases of the year. Next, I want to talk about the Aquaphor Healing Ointment Jar. This is one I do not have because I got a literal giant jar. It's this big. 
um, <laughs> ointment. I know it's kind of a classic. It's not anything new or innovative, but it works really well. Again, since I moved to Alaska, I've been dealing with a ton of dryness, specifically like on my hands and my feet. My feet in particular are really, really bad and they get cracked and bumpy and itchy to the point where they're just really miserable. And I was just looking for anything that would just really help it out. I was still dealing with it to some degree. So it's not like this is like a miracle working product, but I have noticed a vast difference just in the moisture and healing of my hands and feet since I started using it on my jar. I just apply it at night before I go to bed, go to sleep. And like I said, it comes in like a giant jar. I got it for like 17 bucks through Ulta. So it's a, like, it's a really good deal. It lasts for a long time because you don't need a lot. It spreads really nicely. It's been absolutely amazing. The next thing I want to mention, and it's weird to think I've only tried this for the first time this year, but it's the Physicians Formula Muru Muru Butter Bronzer in the shade Light. This has honest, I know it's like a cult classic. I just discovered it for the first time this year after Allie Klein's sit like using it a million times over and like everyone using it a million times over like oh my goodness this is so great and I know the shade range isn't great I want them to do better so badly and I'm like like morally I'm like should I actually support this brand like should I like should I support someone who doesn't have good shade ranges and then at the same time I'm like but this is like one of the few bronzers that really works for me that I've tried that's like at a drugstore price point and I'm like I should probably just try something else but I'm not gonna throw it away I'm gonna finish using it and then I'll debate with myself about the moral ethics of repurchase thing and I probably will try something else but for right now this is absolutely one of my favorites it's been so good I'm wearing it right now I went a little heavier on the bronzer than I normally would but it was for a very specific book look I don't know which of these videos will go up first probably this this will probably go up uh, once I once I do the book look it's for the island of sea woman by Lisa C I will try and remember to come back and link it up here I may forget <laughs> anyway but it smells glorious. It is really just the perfect, like it's just the perfect bronzing for my skin. It's very light, it's buildable. The one downsides would again be mentioning that Physicians Formula as a brand has historically not been good at their shade ranges. They only have four of these and they do not go very deep. So I would absolutely love to see the brand do better in the future because I mean, it's 2021, come on man, get it together. And the packaging is just very bulky. It like has like a double so you can like flip it and they have like a sponge and mirror that comes with it, but I've legitimately never used the sponge. I don't, hold on, should I even work? I mean, kind of. Whatever, I don't, I don't use it. The packaging is very bulky. And then it clunks. The actual formula is amazing and the shade works really well for me. It doesn't make me look orange, which that is another struggle I have with a lot of bronzers. Like even if they're fair enough, they don't work well for my neutral undertone and I end up looking like an Oompa Loompa. And so for a long time, I thought I legitimately just couldn't bronze. And this was the first bronzer I ever tried that I was like, oh my goodness, this legitimately works for me. So I would love to see them do better and expand their shade range in the future. Other drugstore brands can do it. So Physicians Formula, can get it together. That's all I have to say on that one. The next thing I want to mention is actually a hair combo. So I've been really trying to experiment with taking better care of my hair this year. <laughs> my hair is very thick and it was very long. It's still very long. But it was down to like my hips. Now it's more like middle of my back. And I tried to do not quite curly girl, but like my hair used to be a lot more wavy than it is and I knew a lot of it was just I needed to get it relayered. It was being really weighed down by the thickness of my hair. So I kind of fully switched up my routine. So if you want like a full like, hair routine video where I actually try and make my hair look really wavy, I'll insert a picture here of my hair when it's actually nice and full bodied and wavy. And I actually have the time and energy to put effort into making my hair look nice and wavy. These products really help. So I use a mousse and sea salt spray combo. So the sea salt spray was recommended by my hairstylist. So this is the Devine's sea salt spray. I don't know if it has like a specific name. It just says literally this is a sea salt spray. Um, basically I go in first with a mousse after I've wet my hair and then I have to dry it to fullness. I cannot do like dry halfway or dry 90% if I want my hair to hold its curl. I have to dry it to 100% because of how thick it is and it's really annoying. But then after that um, 
you know, drying it with a diffuser and everything, I go in with the sea salt spray. I go ahead and scrunch. You know, I mean, it, it was rather expensive, but you don't need a lot of it. Spritz a few times and the sea salt really helps grab the waves, give it some texture and some body and some lift, and the waves look really nice and defined. So again, my hair is not specifically curly. I do have areas that curl, like, like specifically like my shorter ends and like towards the front of my hair, like that leans a little bit more curly. The rest of my hair is a little bit more straight wavy. Yeah, it's it's a little bit all over the place, but this really helps it. It makes my hair look more cohesive and whole. It smells divine. It's, it smells like straight up vanilla, like just putting vanilla in your hair and it's amazing. The bottle does tend to gather some like salt around the sides. I just live with it. Honestly, this is really, really, really good, especially in combination with my mousse, but that combo has been really good for me. When I have like an hour to sink into my hair, which isn't all the time, but when I do, it's really nice. Next thing I want to mention is the Juvia's Place lipsticks. Um, Juvia's Place is one of my favorite brands in general. They're an indie brand. They're black woman owned. They're amazing. They have great formulas at an affordable price and they launched lipsticks this year. And first of all, the packaging, amazing. Like it's just so pretty and aesthetically pleasing. All here for it. I have couple shades but my favorite one is definitely this one it is the shade 2020 my one gripe was that with this is the shape it's a little hard for my lips specifically but if i'm careful it's fine i'm gonna swatch it really quick so it's just this really nice mauvey nudie shade it's pretty perfect for me i use it on a fairly regular basis although i have a lot of lipsticks so i do kind of cycle through quite a bit because i like to give all of my collection some love but <laughs> I partially got it because it was just called 2020 and I was like, I guess it's hashtag 2020. But I think just on the whole, they're really buttery and soft. They wear well. And I think it's just a really, really nice bullet lipstick formula. They're affordable, a little bit higher end for drugstore, but that's about where Juvia's Place fits in. But they run sales all the time. So there's no reason why you can't get this for a little bit closer to like six, seven bucks or even less. Honestly, just a really good formula and their shade range is magnificent. They have them split up into like mauves, nudes, pinks, reds, berries, or actually it might just be mauves, nudes, reds, berries. Anyway, really good range. I will definitely try more in the future, but for now I just have this one and I can't remember what the other shade I got was. I didn't bring it with me on break so we'll just we'll just focus on that one okay my very last thing and unfortunately i don't have a lot to show you i just have one thing is pat mcgrath in general so i tried pat mcgrath for the first time this year and um i understand the hype it is so expensive absolutely get it on sale i would not spend full price for pat mcgrath it's just it's too much i will give <laughs> She did release the Celestial Divinity palette for Holiday, which was more affordable for Pat McGrath. It's still not affordable, but it did have a lot more pans. I believe it's an 18 pan palette as opposed to her normal 10 pan, and it was less money. Her normal 10 pan palettes are $125 pop. Her Celestial Divinity palette was 78. Everything I've gotten from Pat McGrath, I've gotten on sale. I'll just leave it at that. But her formulas are amazing. Pat McGrath in general is an iconic makeup artist. I feel like of the luxury brands, that's like one of the few that I would really like to support because I know it's like a black woman owned brand and it's a brand by someone who's really, really passionate about what she does and is really distinguished in the field. Like it's not just someone who started a makeup company. It's actually Pat McGrath, I think as of yesterday when I'm filming this, received damehood in Britain for her services to the fashion and beauty industry. So she's actually, instead of like mother Pat, she's like dame Pat now, I guess. Anyway, but I've just really enjoyed what I've tried from her. Obviously it's not a ton. I would say probably the thing I've enjoyed the most, I really love my eyeshadow palettes. I have Midnight Sun and Celestial Divinity. Again, I want to emphasize I got everything on sale, so please don't feel like you have to spend full price on Pat McGrath because I'm not sure I would. If I'm, I'm now really, really enjoying Pat McGrath's formula. It's just so good. It's so luxurious and her shimmers are to die for. I did not bring any of them on break because I am terrified of traveling with them. I don't want to break them because they cost an arm and a leg even on sale. But I did bring some lipsticks. So I'm going to showcase the couple different formulas that I have. I should have, where's my Blitz Astral? This is her Blitz Transformula. Obviously the packaging is very luxurious. It's very pat. This is the shade, shade Flush Fatale. Um, but they're just very, very nice lipsticks. This one has glitter on it because it's the Blitz Astral formulation. So it's a little bit more sheer and buildable. You can get it to be somewhat pigmented like this, or it can be just a sheer wash of color and glitter. 
This is her standard packaging, obviously a little bit different from her Blitz Astral packaging, but this is the classic black and gold and cold lips. This is the shade Major Red. It is her matte trans formula, or nope, this is her Luxe trans formula. Didn't grab. So obviously it's just this very, it's this very gorgeous blue red. Um, my other favorite blue red is Besame's Red Velvet, which is my Peggy Carter shade. So I will show you that. Obviously it's seen some wear and tear, but I will show you the comparison. So um, Major Red is a lot more vibrant than Red Velvet, so they work for different looks. I love both of them, but I didn't try this one this year, so that's why it's not my favorites for things I tried this year. Otherwise, this is one of my favorites of all time. If you want to see some of my favorites of all time, I would check out my my 10-ish favorite beauty products, which it's not the most updated. I have some changes since then. Anyway, but this formula is very good. It's very sheeny. It does transfer fairly badly, but that's fairly normal for that formula. You're not going to expect a sheeny bullet lipstick to have super long lasting power. It lasts like a normal amount of time. You do need to reapply it if you're going to be like eating greasy food or whatever. The last one I have to show you is her matte trance formula, and this is in the shade Modern Woman. So it's kind of a nudie cool toned lilac. So obviously I have very different shades because I'm like, I want stuff that I can wear on the regular, but I want shades that are different enough that they still feel like they add to my collection. So this one is just really nice if I'm doing another cool toned look and I don't have a lot of cool toned lipsticks. I tend to lead more into the peachy red area. So it was nice to have a cool toned one to add to my collection. And the matte trans formula is very, very comfortable, which is nice because I've been getting kind of away from, oh gosh, it's like a murder scene. I'm gonna throw some concealer on that because yikes. Oh, I can show you how the makeup remover works. Hold on. I just think Pat McGrath in general, if don't go into debt to buy Pat McGrath, but like I think in general it's like it is actually worth like worth spending the sale money on it. Maybe if I was like a millionaire, I wouldn't mind just dropping <laughs> I would absolutely not mind just dropping some quaint. <laughs> on Pat McGrath, but for my financial situation now, I like spending sale money on Pat McGrath as like a very special occasion. So she does run some sales, so keep an eye out for those if you're interested in her formula. Yeah, so you can see how the makeup removing worked, worked pretty well. All right, that is pretty much all I have for you today. Those are the best beauty products that I tried in the year 2020. So hopefully if you're interested in beauty, that gave you some ideas. Obviously they're in kind of a wide price point, so I just, I like to experiment. I like to try new things and beauty products are one of those things that bring me a lot of joy. I did go a little bit mad on the spending this year. And I think part of it was just, I was definitely in the first part of living on my own in quarantine. I was feeling very lonely and I was just like, I was spending money to kind of like, he's the loneliest a little bit. Like I do get stuff cause I'm like, I'm gonna use this on, I'm gonna use this on the channel. I say this even though I, <laughs> Like I have like zero excuse cause it's not, like not my job or anything. I just do it for fun. But I kind of view building my beauty collection in the same way I view like collecting art supplies or collecting books. They're things that bring me joy and things that I can use to express myself creatively. So I don't think in any way, like I have a pretty massive beauty collection for the average consumer, like for someone who doesn't do this as my job, but it's something that brings me joy and it's something I use on a regular basis for creative purposes. So don't feel in any way that you have to have a massive collection. If you just use a few drugstore products, that's fine. If you really like the luxury stuff, that's also fine. I just do what works for me. Yeah, I like to try a broad variety of formulas. I like to try a broad variety of things, add to my collection, have lots of different styles and colors and everything from cute to functional to drugstore to luxurious makeup. I love all of it. I tend to not be harsh on stuff. I like most things. These are just the products that really spoke to me that I was like, this is like the best of the best stuff that I tried this year. I tried a lot of other stuff that I just enjoyed, that I love, but nothing that like sticks out in my mind is like, this was really, really special. So that's what I was trying to kind of focus on with this video was the stuff that really seemed special to me. Not just the stuff that I love or not just the stuff that I enjoy, but the stuff that's really, truly special special or that I use so often that I have to mention it, like the concealer. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have an absolutely beautiful day. Stay magic, keep reading. I love you all so much. Goodbye!